Welcome to the WRAL Daily Download. I'm Jack Hagel. When Republican lawmakers crafted the North Carolina budget, they set aside a big chunk of change for ambitious economic development projects. In fact, one-tenth of the $30 billion spending plan is devoted to projects meant to attract companies to the state and keep existing ones here. WRAL state government reporter Will Doran dove headlong into the 1,400-page document to examine these investments, and he joins us now. Will, welcome back. Always happy to be here. Well, you've covered the state budget for years now, and lawmakers always set aside money for economic development. What's different about this budget? So it does have a lot of the normal stuff that you see, but it also has some kind of, they take a big swing on a few things, um, you know, high risk, high reward kind of ideas. Um, This is a record budget, you know, more money than we've ever spent. We had kind of an unexpected surplus this year, and I think they took some of that money and said, hey, let's uh, let's swing for the fences with this. So which projects stood out to you from an economic development standpoint? Sure. So there is uh, something called NC Innovation uh, that is getting a really big chunk of change, half a billion dollars over the next two years. Uh, the Global Trans Park out in Kinston is getting $350 million. There's also well over $100 million for mega sites, uh, which are basically just empty pieces of land that uh, the state hopes someone is going to build a factory on. And there are also some smaller initiatives too, right? Yes, uh, tons of smaller initiatives, you know, a billion or a million dollars here, you know, five million dollars there uh, to, you know, help cities and counties build new water and sewer. And, you know, that can help businesses, but that can also help, uh, you know, just gr- growth, you know, building new houses. You, you know, you need water and sewer when you're building a house. Now, this was a particularly contentious uh, budget negotiation. Economic development tends to be a bipartisan issue, though. You know, both parties want to bring companies to the state and they want to grow the revenue base. Were there any disagreements uh, between the parties over any of these line items? Of course, there's always disagreements. Uh, But this was really actually one part of the budget where there is probably the most bipartisan agreement, uh, because like you said, you know, we're we've been ranked the number one state for business a couple years in a row. And people tend to, you know, generally agree that we're going in a solid direction, need to keep up, keep up with our growth. Um, You know, especially on some of those water and sewer projects I mentioned, even though the individual projects are small, there's like $2 billion combined. So the the whole pot of money is really big. And almost all of that money goes to areas that are represented by Republicans in the state legislature. Um, Now, you know, they say that they go through a scoring process and, you know, figure out the where to, you know, put it. But a lot of Democrats don't really believe that. And they kind of view it as more just pork project, you know, helping out the folks back home. So there, there's a little bit of uh, disagreement there. Um, you know, some of the other projects are, you know, people uh, kind of quibble on. Uh, one of the big complaints that we heard from Governor Roy Cooper, he said that he does appreciate, you know, a lot of the, the spending projects that are in here for economic development, but he wanted to see more specifically for education. You know, I mean, everyone knows about RTP and, you know, how there's kind of a direct correlation between states, universities and business here. And he said the budget should have had more for education. Well, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear more about the three billion dollars lawmakers have earmarked for economic development. Stick around. Welcome back to the WRAL Daily Download. We're talking with WRAL state government reporter Will Doran about economic development projects funded in the new state budget. Will, you mentioned before the break this $500 million for NC Innovation. Uh, We previously reported that lawmakers were considering more than a billion dollars for that project. First of all, what is the project and, and what happened to all that funding? NC Innovation is a kind of a new idea in the state public private partnership to give grants to basically the smartest people in North Carolina, some of the professors, researchers at the universities, to help them take their ideas, their research, and turn it into startups. Uh, Basically, you know, we've got all of this money flowing into our universities, really, really smart people. And the idea is just, you know, hey, why don't we help them, you know, take that into the private sector, create jobs, create investments for the state. And so the idea behind NC Innovation is it's going to be a group of university experts, but also private sector people, banking experts, pharmaceutical experts, et cetera, and just kind of help them get these business ideas off the ground. And as you mentioned, the the, the Senate had originally proposed giving this group $1.4 billion. The House 
only wanted to give them 50 million. So <laughs> when when you're off by well over a billion dollars, you know, you just kind of come and meet in the middle. And that's basically what this new budget does. It's $500 million broken over the next two years uh, for this group to to help get some of these research ideas turned into companies, hopefully. Now, another big chunk went to Global Trans Park out in Kinston. Now, over the years, the state has dumped tons of money into that park, but it hasn't always paid off. Uh, is there anything different this year about this allocation? Well, they're certainly hoping that it will be different. Um, I, I, uh, I talked to uh, State Senator uh, Jim Perry, who represents Kinston, and uh, he, he was honest. He said, look, I had to beg for this money because, like you mentioned, you know, in, in the past there have been some you know, financial difficulties with the Trans Park. Um, but he is hopeful that this is kind of the thing that helps it turn the tide. And the idea is to win this huge contract from the Navy. They currently repair all of their planes out in Craven County on the coast at Cherry Point, but they're out of space. And we've got new planes coming in, the F-35s. They need more space, hoping to do it at the Trans Park. So they're going to use this money to build all the facilities they need to bring that project here. And he told me the the facility that exists right now at the Cherry Point base employs 4,000 people, $70,000 average salary, you know, in, in Lenore County and plenty of other places around eastern North Carolina, you know, the typical median household income is like thirty five dollars to $40,000. So if you're talking about, you know, thousands of jobs making an average of seventy grand, I mean, that would be a huge economic driver for not just Lenore County, but really all of the surrounding areas in eastern North Carolina. Now, you also report that the state is pumping more money into what are called mega sites, you know, continuing the strategy of having these turnkey pieces of land ready for new companies uh, to build on. What's new there? There's a couple things new there. Um, one is that the budget uh, basically orders DOT to be more involved, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, there's better roads or, uh, you know, railroad hookups at these sites. Um, but also just there's, you know, pure money. I think it's around $130 million for these sites. And you know, there's there's a few examples, uh, especially here in the Triangle area. Chatham County's been really lucky with mega sites. Um, the VinFast factory going in in Moncure plus Wolf Speed, which is going to be a five billion dollar semiconductor factory out in tiny little Siler City. Once that gets built, uh, pretty soon I think construction is set to begin soon. Um, so the idea is, hey, we need to create more of these places. Like it, it's worked when we've had them. So. There's $130 million uh, to basically identify new sites, buy up the land, develop the land, get it shovel ready, as economic developers like to say. You know, well, there's that old adage, you have to spend money to make money. How will we know if these projects, this $3 billion litany of things uh, has paid off? That is a great question. And the answer kind of varies depending on what project you're looking at. So the, the $2 billion on water and sewer there's no oversight there. That's just handing out money to cities and counties and say, go for it. You know, here's your money. Do what you need to do. Uh, for some of the kind of riskier projects, uh, there are some oversight built in. You know, for the $350 million to the Global Trans Park out in Kinston, it actually says if they do manage to land this big contract that they're hoping to land, then they're going to have to pay back the money to the state. Uh, basically, it's like an interest-free loan. Of course, if they don't land the contract, then, oh, well, we're just out that money. Um, the $500 million to NC Innovation, that comes with some strings attached. Um, the innovation group has to make a few changes to its governing structure, like letting lawmakers appoint board members, uh, a few other you know checklist items that they have to meet. Um, and then also it, there's you know explicit language about uh, oversight that the legislature will get to have um, through uh, a new legislative committee. Um, just to, you know, see, hey, we're putting half a billion dollars into this thing. Is it doing what we hoped that it would? One of the biggest economic boosts in the budget might be something that doesn't cost the state a dime, right? Yes. Uh, Medicaid expansion. Uh, this finally getting <laughs> approved in the budget. It was legalized uh, months ago, but tied to the passage of the budget. Uh, so now that is set to begin in December. Um, hospital executives are just really jazzed about that, of course, because, you know, it's going to help them. But really, it should help all industries. I was uh, I spoke with the CEO of ECU Health uh, for this article, and he told me, you know, yes, it's going to help us be more stable, which will be good for the local economy since, you know, 
they employ 15,000 people around eastern North Carolina. But he said also, you know, think about, you know, the 600,000 people in North Carolina who qualify for Medicaid expansion. Most of them are employed. They're working. They just – their jobs don't offer health insurance. And so, you know, if they have had, you know, recurring injuries that have kept them out of work, maybe they have untreated mental health or substance abuse issues, maybe they have just a chronic health issue that they haven't been able to get treated. And he told me, look, you know – now people are going to be able to afford preventive care. They're going to be able to afford their medication. They're going to be able to, you know, go see a primary care doctor and get, you know, an annual checkup. And that should, you know, not only boost the the healthcare economy, but just all industries with, you know, fewer people having to take off sick from work or, you know, getting injured on the job, things like that. Well, I know that you'll be keeping a close eye on that and the other economic development measures in the budget. Will, thanks. Thank you. That's WRL State Government reporter Will Doran. For his in-depth look at the North Carolina budget, go to nccapital.com. I'm Jack Hagel. Thanks for joining us and thanks for listening to the WRL Daily Download and for making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WRL news is the Morning Briefing newsletter. It's a daily email with triangle news, events, and headlines to help you get ready for the day. Sign up at wral.com newsletter. 